oral history interview conducted for the Witness to War Serving a Nation Project at Nassau Regional High School on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Uh, for the sake of this interview, please state your full name and community in which you now reside. Manny Marrero, and I live in Yarmouth, Mass. Okay. Um, so, first question is, how did you end up on Cape Cod? My wife was... Uh, my wife's family had a home here since she was a little girl, and uh, we started coming here in the summertime around five years ago when we moved back from San Diego. I was stationed over there. So basically we fell in love with it, and we knew if we had the opportunity we'd like to move here. So my in-laws um, opened their house to us in the beginning, um, I believe the beginning of December of uh, yeah, 2014, and I started an internship at Cape Cod Hospital. And then from there, I did a second internship where I currently work, Cape Cod Orthopedics on North Street in Hyannis. And once I got a full-time job, we looked for a home and found a nice house in Yarmouth, and we decided to live here full-time. <coughs> um, why did you decide to join the military? Um, one of the biggest reasons was I wanted to try something different after high school. All of my friends were um, going off to college, and. Um, I knew I wanted to do something different, so I looked into the military. My, my uncle was a Marine, so I was always interested in the Marine Corps. And um, after some research and a little bit of uh, thinking and convincing of my mother, because she had to sign for me because I was 17 at the time, um, she, she agreed reluctantly. And um, I chose the Marines because it was uh, one of the toughest ones from what I've heard. They um, provided me with um, a lot of the information right off the bat, which I liked and they were honest. And another big reason why I wanted to join was um, I wanted my college to be paid for. Um, I didn't want to graduate with student loans and things like that, so I knew that was a, a great benefit. And I mean, pretty much those, those, those two are the main reasons. Um, challenge, family, ties to the Marine Corps, college um, benefits. So I decided to join. Um, how old were you? Told yeah, I was, um, I was 17 when I first signed up. And right after I graduated high school, I left for boot camp. So I was 18 at the time when I officially left for boot camp and started my career. Okay, so how did your whole family respond? Um, they, were, they were scared. They were nervous. Um, my mother just kind of experienced my uncle being um, in Vietnam when she was younger, and he was injured over there. So she had some negative experiences with the Marines and just to, just seeing what like can happen. So basically she was very reluctant because she had to like, like I said, co-sign for, co for me. But after it was all said and done and I graduated, they were very proud and they were, they supported me 100% in everything I did. But you know, like any mother and uh, father, they were just nervous for me and just pretty much that's about it. But they were very supportive. Okay. Uh, what was it like to leave That's probably one of the hardest things um, because you really couldn't communicate much with um, with your loved ones back home when you were away. Um, so it, it was tough, but it's just part of the job. You kind of know what you're signing up for. Um, luckily, there was some email access once in a while. Um, it was before social media, so there was no Facebook or any, any of that. So we just basically all email and um, some letter writing. And that's how we kept in contact once in a while, phones, but phones were very inconsistent. So usually email and uh, letters were the most consistent. So um, that made it a little easier, but it w overall it was tough being away. That's one of the hardest parts. Um, describe to us a typical day in training. Um, typical day, you wake up around 5.30 a.m. and you have to get pretty much ready and under like a minute or two it's everything's very fast paced um, and from there you go to have breakfast which they call chow and then after that um, there's either a lot of um, educational training um, classroom time or physical training um, pretty much every morning we started with physical training some mornings we went right into classroom stuff and from there, we do either weapons or martial arts training in the afternoon. Um, and then we do lunch after that. And then from there, we do a lot of um, close order drill, marching around and weapons movements and, and things along that nature. And after that, we would have 
time to shower about an hour of free time where you had a chance to write letters to your loved ones and lights out was about at 9 p.m so um and then after lights out you pretty much had to be um sleeping in your bunk um you couldn't just be up walking around doing whatever you wanted because they wanted you to get the re eight hours rest because you wake up at 5 30 and do it all over again uh what were your initial thoughts when you arrived in iraq hmm uncertainty um fear of the unknown and just overall pretty much like uh not knowing what lies ahead was my biggest like uh thought at the time and thinking like how will they respond to us the people and the locals so those those were my initial thoughts and just uh i just took it tried to take it one day at a time not to get too caught up in thinking about it really um did you bring any photos with you to iraq yeah i did i brought um photos of my girlfriend at the time, my mother, and my brother, and, and my family, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, what foods did you eat there? Um, we mostly, when we first arrived, we had packaged meals called MREs, which aren't the best tasting meals in the world. They have like a 10 year shelf life and they're all pre packaged. And we pretty much ate those breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the first two to three months we were initially in Iraq. And then from there, they started slowly trickling in some better food for us. But it wasn't really any better. It was just like bigger prepackaged meals that they would serve to us on plates instead of like us opening up the wrappers and just eating on the fly and then going back to what we were doing. So the food wasn't good at all, <laughs> basically. Um, who was the most influential or memorable person you met while serving and describe them? <coughs> I would say probably um, my good friend Matthew Craw. He's um, he was always a caring. Well, he is. He he still is. He's my good friend still. He's very caring, um, always willing to to lend a hand if he needed to, and very engaging. He he comes from a from a very uh, loving family. His father was like a big football star. He played for the Boston Patriots actually when they were the Boston Patriots, and um, we always hit it off because we were. When you're in the Marines, like there's a big melting pot of guys from all over the place, and you tend to bond to people who kind of grew up like near near you or like have like the same uh, same upbringing, things along that nature. So he was from Jersey. I grew up in New York initially, initially before I moved to Mass, and so we hit it off right away. We were East Coast boys and around a bunch of West Coast guys, and uh, he was always uh, just my right hand man, always by my side. And he ended up writing a book when, when we got out of the Marines, and he's doing very well. And it, the experiences that we were that we um, witnessed and the things we experienced there is they were hard to like put down on paper. And he actually did it, and that's what he went to school for. And just to see what he made of himself after he got out, and to be able to like put our experiences all on on a book. And do well with it was um, that was very like uh, inspirational to me, and it was something that like to this day means a lot. And I always like try to get people to read it because it's such a like well written, like thoughtful thing he did. And um, he's doing a lot of advocating for for um, veterans nowadays that are dealing with certain things, and um, so he's he's doing really well. He's very inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> uh, explain your fondest memory from your time in service. Mm. That's a great question. Fondest memory. Probably the day I graduated boot camp because it's um, it's really three months of the hardest training and a lot of um, mental anguish that you go through. And then finally, when it's all said and done, they call you Marine for the first time. And, and it's um, just such a big accomplishment that I'm still proud of to this day. And it's really um, laid out a great path for me in life and um, it's one of the best things I ever did. So that was probably one of the best days. Um, as an Iraqi veteran, yep. how do you 
feel about ISIS? Um, well, it's scary, um, to be honest with you. It's, it seems like they have a lot of resources. They're very evil. Um, they're, they're looking to just do whatever they can to terrorize other people that don't believe in what they believe in. And they don't like our way of life over here. And um, they want to inflict um, a lot of like fear and, and pain uh, to innocent people. And, and that's very scary. And um, it's unfortunate that um, it's now it's getting to this part where we felt like it was almost secure and then after we left, they kind of took over, and now it's become this big problem that uh, it's probably going to last a long time, from uh, what I've heard and what I've been uh, reading. So um, I just hope it's, uh, it gets under control soon, because it can get out of hand. Um, describe your darkest moment in the service. Um, hmm. I would say probably the day that I, I found out at one of my um one of he became friends with me and we started hitting it off um for about the first uh three or four weeks that we were like um training together in Iraq and um it's one of my good friends uh Jeffrey Perez at the time and unfortunately one day I heard that um he was out on like a ch vehicle checkpoint and a car came through and detonated a bomb and and he he was killed in in that uh, incident and he had a, a young daughter at home that he was very excited to go back to see and we had plans to hang out when we got back to california and things like that and that was probably one of the darkest days because it really just um brought to light like how fast it can happen and how so much can be taken away from you at in just an instant um, we were just talking the night before and made all these plans to um, to do like when we got back to California and then the next morning I heard that happened and that, and to this day it really bothers me because he was like so full of life he had a loving family and uh, it was all just taken away just in an instant like that and um, I w and then I would I still at times think like wow that could easily have been me like you know we would trade off these posts and I was in, in posts very similar to where he was that day and and things along that nature so that's probably the darkest day. Uh. Um, explain the impact of joining the military and how it influenced you today. Oh, it influences me every day. Um, it's, it taught me discipline, um, a lot of um, great character traits, leadership. And it paved the way for me to do well in college. Um, I graduated at the, pop, at the top of my class in undergrad and graduate school and became an occupational therapist. And um, to this day, the foundations that I learned through boot camp and through my time in the military, I still use. And, um, to, you know, it's to be punctual, to be honest, to um, do what you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. And just those things go a long way. And just to be a true professional. And they taught me all of that. And I still use it. And I've been successful so far. <clears throat> How did you feel coming home to your family? Oh, it was uh, the greatest feeling. Because you, you get to hug them. And share great moments with them. And it's just something that you try not to take for granted. Um, because some people didn't have that luck to come back to their loved ones. So I was just very happy and fortunate to have been able to just to see my, my parents and my siblings and hug them and, and still share moments with them. It's, it's the best, it was the best thing. What did, what did you do when you got home? Mm. When I first got home? I spent a lot of time with my family and just took time to relax and that was the biggest thing just taking time to relax and unwind because we were on edge for a long time we were over there so i just um spent a lot of time we we shared moments i um i tried to reconnect with all of my uh, old friends um again to make sure they knew i was okay and we had a chance to hang out and um, just overall spending time with friends, family, loved ones. Uh, that's what it, my main focus was. How did you entertain yourself? <clears throat> um, when, what, in what context? Like when you weren't doing anything, like you weren't in combat or... 
Right, like when I was deployed when I, while I was in Iraq overseas. Um, we we had like little mini portable DVD players, so we watched a lot of movies. Um, I read books, magazines. Um, I worked out a lot. Went on, um, believe it or not, there was like little makeshift gyms all over the place where we were. So we would um, do what, like lift sandbags if we uh, wanted to, um, run around the area that was secured. Um, just joked around with the guys. Um, so everyone has stories from back home. So and P and you meet guys from all different walks of life and all different backgrounds and different parts of the world and countries. So it's just as interesting just to sit down and talk with you know, your your um, fellow Marines for a while and just kind of get to know them too. Um, <coughs> was there something special you did for good luck? Mm, not not really. Uh, I'm not that super i don't get caught up in like the superstition um so what i like to do is just um i like to remain con consistent in like the things i do and and just kind of have routines and try to be neat about um, my stuff so i mean other than that i don't really do anything for like quote unquote luck i just tried to like set my routine and stick to it because it just made me feel like um, i was setting myself up for success <coughs> what did I think of them? I think we had some of the best uh, Marines and officers around. And um, I don't just say that because they were um, in my unit. I, I hear from a lot of guys that have been around many units in the Marines. And the group of guys that we had while we were deployed to Iraq, were, um, we all liked each other. We all worked great as a team. We um, watched out for each other, and that's the most important thing, was that we genuinely cared about each other, and that meant a lot. And so for um, a long time, we were the only unit that um, didn't have a casualty of war until, unfortunately, down the road, you know, some things happened. But we, um, we always remained true to each other, and I think that was um, the biggest reason why we were so successful. And, um, you know, to this day, I have some great friends that um, I never lost contact with. And um, we really always talk, uh, talk to one another, make sure, like, we're doing well. And um, you just make lifelong friends that become almost your family. So I think, I think the world of the guys I served with. So how did your officers, like, treat you guys? Um, with the utmost respect. Um, just, like, like fellow Marines um, with... with um, they put trust in us, we put trust in them, and we had a great mutual relationship. And they just gave us the direct orders. And if we had any questions, we, we addressed them. If there weren't, we executed the orders. And uh, that's how it just it works. Um, as long as you pretty much do what you're told, if it's not unlawful and you just follow orders, you usually have a great time in the military. If you don't do that, then their issues arise. But um, since we had a great relationship with the officers and, and the enlisted, um, we never had any major issues. So we all had a good relationship. Uh, do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events? Oh, um, daily. Um, there were times where we would just wrestle <laughs> because we were bored and we'd have like fight club type scenes or we or we would um play practical jokes on each other where we would like hide each other's sleeping bags in the middle of the night or like shake each other's tents and act like uh bigfoot is around the corner i mean um just silly silly things um th you know what's funny there's there's so many i can't really pinpoint one but um I think just like the funniest things were just we would play just practical jokes on each other like fill, like some guys would just come over and then they'd fill your boot up with shaving cream and then you wake up in the morning and you put your foot in your boot and it's like a ton of shaving cream and you don't know who did it because like there's like 10 guys over there laughing at you and um, so just things like that happen daily believe it or not and that's how we, we maintained um, our um, we just kept everything light you know because if you try to get caught up in the moment too much and, and then you kind of stress yourself out so that's how we pass the time just play jokes on each other and laugh at each other uh, your microphone fell off by the way oh no okay um 
Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general, and how so? Um, well, yes, it did, because um, I was part of it for such a long time. And to this day, when I hear of um, possible wars and politicians making decisions of sending troops overseas, it, um, it kind of gets me a little fired up because sometimes I feel like we jump to conclusions and we, we want to send our troops overseas to go fight wars that we can probably um, avoid or have other countries take care of themselves instead of us always sending our troops overseas. So um, I try to stay up on current events and things along that nature and um, it still concerns me that we're thinking of sending guys back over because then that means um, we can lose um, you know our fellow Americans over there we have guys that come back that have um, like PTSD and and have trouble adjusting back to society and that causes just more issues in the long run um, so I just hope that um, we don't go that route anymore and we try to figure out other means instead of having to go to war all the time so how did you feel about the Paris shootings? Or oh, that was, yeah, I was, I was very sad for, for those people. And um, it, it, was, it was heartbreaking. It really was because um, you can relate a lot to um, a city like Paris and those poor people that were just, you know, enjoying themselves, having dinner at a restaurant or watching a play. And then that happens. And, um, you know, now things like San Bernardino and, and uh, that can easily happen in our country, in New York City and, and things like that. So it was just, um, it was heartbreaking. And I just hope that uh, things like that don't don't happen here, but they very well can. And um, it's just uh, it's very unfortunate that that's our world now. So um, speaking of terrorist attacks, your mm -hmm. first day of boot camp was on 9/11, right? Right. So how did that feel? That was probably one of the most uh, scary and confusing days of my life. Um, because it was my first day of boot camp, so that there was already like that going on in my head. I didn't know what to expect. I was in in chaos, and then that happened. So I I, I didn't really understand the magnitude of what happened on that day until I arrived home three months later. Um, simply because when you arrive to boot camp, you're um, closed off from any television cell phone, electronic device. I mean, you don't have any connection to the outside world for those three months you're in training. So w I didn't see footage of it until three months after it happened. They kind of gave us a small brief saying we were attacked. If you have any family in New York City, um, come on up and um, you can call your loved ones. Um, if not, we're going to continue training, but um, you guys may be the first Marines to go to war because this was a terrorist attack and then this may mean we're, go we're going to battle. So from then on, I knew it was very serious, but like I said, I didn't know the magnitude of it until I saw footage of the planes crashing into the buildings and uh, the Twin Towers um, crumbling down and the Pentagon and all these um, different like news um, clippings that I had no idea what was going on because we just, like I said, we, we received a small briefing and then from there they just trained us because they didn't want us to really get too caught up in what was happening in the outside world. They wanted to f us to focus on the training at hand and graduating and then moving on in our careers. And uh, so that was, it, it was a very scary and confusing day. And then three months later, I really, it sunk in how drastic it was. So it was all very, overall, very surreal. It was a very surreal day. So did it like change how you thought about the world and yeah, um, it did um, because I it was different when when I started um, driving back up to Massachusetts from South Carolina with my parents. I would look around and I would notice every car had like the American flag and people were saying thank you to me when I would stop at a rest stop because I had like a Marine Corps T-shirt on and it was I was like well thank you for what I'm not sure what's really going on. <laughs> All I did was finish boot camp and. Uh, so th then I just started noticing it. it was a different it was a different world it was we like our safety net was almost like taken out from underneath us and from then on it was we were vulnerable I felt like um, because we've been attacked so badly and uh, and it did change the world it was a different world and it, even to this day it's never been the same unfortunately um, is there anything you miss from being <coughs> in the Marines 
Yeah, the the camaraderie um, you have with the guys you served with. Um, it was uh, exciting at times, um, a lot of traveling. And the biggest part, I would say, is um, the camaraderie you have with the, with the guys. They're, they become your brothers, and you see them all the time, and um, you, you, you form a bond that's unbreakable. And to have that taken away, um, I'd still miss it to this day. So, I, like I said, I keep in close contact through either phone or Facebook with, with my um, real close friends that I met there. But uh, it's not the same because you don't see them on a daily basis and have time to share, like, uh, all the funny things that we do and all the, uh, the miserable things we experience together. <laughs> and it just brings you closer. So when they first told you that you were going home for good, mm -hmm. what did you feel? Oh, just a sense of relief. Um, because you knew you were coming back and that uh, awful experience was over and you were coming back home to your loved ones and to somewhere that um, you enjoy being instead of being somewhere where people don't want you there and, and there's always danger lurking around the corner. Um, so it was just a very happy, great feeling. <coughs> Did you ever once, when you were serving, mm -hmm. regret that you had decided to <clears throat> Not really, no. There were days where you would sort of like question, like, you know, well, what would I be doing if I weren't here and, and things like that. But I've never regretted it because I knew that it would help me in the long run. And it would be something that I, I, will, I, would, I will be proud of and something I wanted to do. And I, when I do something, I try to be very passionate about it. I don't just do it because I'm, I have, like, second thoughts. So n I never once regretted anything I did. Um, but like any normal person, there were times where I sort of questioned, you know, uh, things. Um, but I um, quickly realized that I want to keep my eye on the goal. And I said I was going to serve my four years. I wanted to get my college paid for and I wanted to serve my country honorably and at the end of the day I've accomplished my goal and I'm very happy about it. So you were talking about things that you questioned <coughs> like mm -hmm. what did you really question? Um, I would question things like all right I joined and now I am fighting a war that um, I, n I don't I don't really understand what what would I be doing if I didn't join? I would be out having friends or having fun with my friends in college and things along that nature. But then where would my life ha be because I didn't have this experience? So you just start to just question things like that in your mind. But like I said, it's, it's very brief and you just kind of move on. Um, but it was nothing um, too like... Uh, I just I didn't look into it too much basically I just kind of like superficially looked at it and um, just tried to see what my life would be if I didn't do this or that but then I would just revert back to being happy with my decisions and everything I've done um, how would you describe a hero hmm that is a good question um, I think everyone describes it differently I would describe it as um, someone who is very selfless and is willing to help others at um, any cost and has unwavering courage and determination to do something bigger than themselves. Is there anyone you know that you would like, look up to as a hero? <clears throat> um, probably my uncle. He's um, He was the biggest one in my life. Um, and like I said, he was a Marine. He was very courageous. He had a Bronze Star um, in Vietnam, and he helped a lot of his guys out when they were in the most trouble. And he was a wonderful family man and did his time honorably, always was willing to lend a helping hand to anyone around him. And I always saw him as one of my biggest heroes. And I think I owe it to him that I did so well in the Marines because I wanted to just kind of follow in his footsteps and make him proud because he would always um, just tell me his wonderful stories. And I think he saw something in me um, that he didn't see in other people. And he knew that I was very like interested in the things he did. So um, unfortunately, he passed away before um, 
I became a Marine, so he didn't get a chance to see me become a Marine. But um, I know somewhere that um, he's just proud of me. So, and uh, most, I can say that he's definitely the biggest hero that's ever been in my life. Uh, what advice would you give someone who is thinking about joining the military? Um, to do your research and if you are going to do it, do it with all, all of your heart. If you have any second guesses as to um, whether or not you want to do it, I would um, hold off until you feel 100% committed um, because I think some people get into it um, without the 100% commitment and they realize it's not for them. Um, but it's not just something you can um, easily get out of. So, uh, but it's one of the best things that could ever happen to you. But you have to do it with passion or else um, you're not going to enjoy it because it's a very demanding um, line of work. It's a very demanding career if you make it a career, um, but it can be um, very beneficial and it can be um, s some of the best experiences you ever have in your life and the benefits are endless. So just do your research and really look into what you want to do. Do you have any follow-up questions? No, I don't have any questions. <laughs> oh, this one? Okay. Is there anything you'd like to mention that we didn't cover? Mm -hmm. Just, I, um... I just wanted to mention, like, the military gets caught up in the political agenda a lot of times in our country, and we just go into it and we just do our jobs, and when we come back, a lot of people have their own um, ideas of what sh they think should happen when it comes to military action or what they think shouldn't happen or whether or not they believe in war. And I think sometimes uh, the troops get caught in the middle of this. And what, like I know our, our country is great at supporting the troops, but I think sometimes um, people lose sight of um, what we really do out there and we're just doing our jobs and we really care about everyone's safety back home. And that's one thing I noticed of um, all the guys I've served with. Like, they're genuinely loving, caring people. And we're not just these, um, like, warmongers and, like, guys who just want to go and shoot rifles. You know, we, we just, we're just doing our job and we want to come back home to our families. And that's one of the biggest things I want people to take away from, um, from if, they're, if they're watching is this is, guys and w the men and women of our armed forces really care about everyone's um, safety back home and if we just support them i think it would make everyone's uh life easier um, and it would bring us all together as americans instead of um, being divided so much between this and that and it gets too political at times i feel like <coughs> thank you yeah thank you you're welcome I would go the microphone fell again.